Welcome to Adobe APAC Live. My name is Flynn. I'm the host for this afternoon, and I'm here with Dale Bagini. How you doing? I'm good. Good to be back. We made it. Yep, finally. Um, there's already some people in the chat. Hey, Hannah, David, um, Zanita. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, Michelle, uh, thanks for jumping in. I know some of you have mentioned in the chat, we actually missed last week. We had some technical difficulties, but Dale was kind enough to come in a second time and give us another crack. <laughs> No comment. We did it. We, we made it. We're here. We did it. Um, it's really exciting. So now we've had more time to refine this show. So this is going to be amazing. Um, so uh, you can log in um, to Adobe APAC Live in the top right-hand corner. Jump into the chat room. Say hello. Um, did you guys miss last week? Uh, were you here? Did you Were you expecting a show and then there wasn't one? If so, we're sorry, but hey, it's going to be a cracking show today. So you can log in with your uh, Creative Cloud account, so just your Adobe ID. In the top right hand corner we're actually going to see if we can um, ask a couple of questions of the chat as well and you can impact the artwork that dale's going to do for us today which will be really really cool um so say hello it's good to see some familiar faces and some new faces in there um so dale um how are you maybe for people that haven't seen you on the live stream before um maybe you can tell people a little bit about what you do sure um so since I was last here, actually, I've quit my full-time job and yes. am now pursuing the great Australian dream of working for myself. Nice. Um, I've lost a lot of sleep and, you know, probably lost a lot of money, but it's all good. I'm happy. And, yeah, so I'm just a, I'm a, I'm an illustrator, designer from yep. Sydney, just, yeah, working away at it and giving it a fair go and, yeah, just trying – not to stress out too much, but yeah, it's awesome. Like seeing seeing that transition from when we first met you, yeah, um, and now you're just fully head first into illustration, which is super cool because it's how we could get you back on. Exactly, and it's just um, it's where I wanted to be for the longest time. So, like I said, just really happy and yeah, yeah just confident that it's all going to be like worthwhile. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh hell yeah, it is. Yeah. No, I don't think anybody ever regrets nah. making a step like that. Um, so that's really exciting. So uh, last time you were on, we focused heavily in Photoshop. So we did the whole thing in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And then now this time we're going to do a little bit of Photoshop, but we're yep. going to also talk about the transition from Photoshop into Illustrator. Yep. So basically, yeah, we'll just revise and, you know, recap on where we were with the Photoshop stuff. Um, won't go too much into it. I don't want to bore everyone, but then, yeah, we'll just have a look at some little tips and tricks that I use in Illustrator to get to my final um, piece, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's going to be super cool. And chat rooms, JB from Australia, hello. Hey, from Anton. Where's Anton? Don't know where that is. Andrea, hey, what's up? Um, Zero Universe. Awesome, guys. Great to see you all in there. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions as we go through, um, and we'll find appropriate times yeah. to to switch from kind of uh, doing the illustration and craft and then asking the questions. But we'll see what we can get in there. Um, hey, Jan from the Philippines. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, why don't we get started? Yeah, sure. We can check it out. All right, cool. So we'll just go head first into this. Um, so basically, we're just going to open a new document and I'm going to talk a little bit about just just how I would rough in an idea and get a, get a project underway. Um, besides the usual things of getting some inspiration online, mm -hmm. music, TV, advertising, wherever it, the case may be, um, the the concept mode never really changes. Um, so basically, I'm just going to go in and work very roughly, and I mean really rough. So you're just in so, straight up vanilla Photoshop. Yep, nothing nothing fancy here. Just using standard brushes standard settings um yeah and then i'll just like map it out i know that i want it in a square or maybe i want it in a diamond it doesn't really matter it's very loose at this point and literally whatever my design's going to be you know everyone's sick for the skulls so, so you have a bit of an idea of what you're kind of crafting in this case yeah so let hypothetically a client's asked for a skull yeah it's got to have that um, tattoo vibe to it, um, skateboarding kind of essence. Um, and I'll just do some research and think about it in my head for a little bit. And then I'll throw together like five minute rough thumbnails like this 
like not spending much time on it at all. Yeah. Um, I know where all the pieces have to go that I want to use. Um, there's one there. So I know that I want it to have a flower in there somewhere. Flower might go there. It's really sketchy, like I said. Doesn't have to have any detail at all. Um, I'm the only one at this point who's seeing it. Um, and this is basically to give it some direction from my end. Yeah. And then from that point, once it's looking quite, you know, sketched out, roughed out, like you see on the screen here, I just make some notes and like cues for myself to, to look back on and, you know, it's going to be a border. Is it going to be clouds? Is it going to be fire? Whatever the case may be. But this is all just using standard brushes, standard settings. It's like really yeah. thin, really fine kind of light. Brush. Yeah, just really light, kind of like how I guess animators, illustrators used to do it on paper back in the day. Yeah, like just so that it's really light, and then I can go over it with my my digital ink if I'm going to stay in Photoshop, or mm -hmm. I can use it in this rough format. Um, but from this point, I will I will then go in and start kind of refining it. So I'd knock the opacity back just so I can roughly see where I'm going, and then just go in with my brush. That is already selected. That's crazy. So when you refine, are you intentionally using a different color? Um, yeah, I guess for two reasons. Um, out of habit is the main reason. I just always have. Mm. Um, obviously, again, going back to like the early days of like illustration and that when it was um, a lot done in print shops and things like that. Mm. Um, uh, I guess they used to use the red and the blue because they were softer colors and they wouldn't be picked up after they've inked it. So right. once they lay the black down, the cameras wouldn't um, pick up those colors. All I right. guess, but now it's just like, I guess it's like an industry standard. People use it and I've just used it out of, like I said, out of habit. Yeah. So yeah, I go in and I start refining those lines and I'm not sure what's going on there, so... And JB asks, um, what's the, is that a Wacom you're using? It sure is. This is um, the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. So this is an all-in-one device, um, quite handy. Um, saves me carrying around a laptop and a tablet together. Mm. I've just got it all in here. It runs on Android software, runs the Creative Suite pretty pretty much flawlessly. Um, but yeah, it's it's super handy. It's got touch screen enabled, so you can do all this fancy stuff, which is cool. But um, yeah, so that's the Mobile Studio Pro. Nice. So yeah, I've got I've started drawing in my line work. I'll get it refined a bit more, so then you start seeing it more in a defined kind of light, and you should get something like that. So I'll go in and I'll draw each of the elements separately in the same style, just going over until I get my... I guess my structure lines, let's call them. Mm -hmm. It looks quite refined. Like, yeah, it, it does. It's a pretty good drawing, mm. I must say. <laughs> whoever did this, <laughs> um, he, he does look a little bit like he's picking his nose there. You know, picking roses, noses, picking whatever. Roses it's, and noses. It's all good. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got this refined kind of layout now, and I know that that's that's the general scope of how I want it to look. Right. Um, but I do then go in and kind of like. So I've drawn it in multiple colors because I tried to keep all the elements separate. And then I've got it now as one one piece. And that's literally using that same hard pressure around size brush in Photoshop and nothing else. Just, mm. you know, even the lines in here that are thick and thin are coming in as basically. So I've got my brush set to, say, 15 points. So I can go in and do my thick line if I want, or I can go in and do a really, like, my thin line work. It's all pressure sensitive. Just with the same the same brush yeah, settings. Yeah, so, so it's really fast. Yeah, so, and it just saves me from jumping in and out of settings and windows and things like that. So, um, I, yeah, I'm finding ways in Photoshop to kind of reduce time spent in here, yeah. especially knowing that we are jumping straight into Illustrator. So... Mm. I do then go from that point and I'll just use that same brush again, but I'll just drop the opacity and flow. So I'm in here 
and then I'll just go in, make a new layer. Layers are pretty important. And I'll just start working out where I want um, my shaded parts to be. So I can go in and, you know, I know that this is going to be, oh, that's crazy. That's going to be darker there. The eye is going to be filled in. <laughs> that's gnarly. So yeah, I go in, start shading in kind of like my solid areas or my black areas, mm -hmm. um, work out where mids, shadows, highlights, all that sort of stuff. And then it should end up looking somewhat similar to this kind of thing. One you prepared earlier? Yeah. So you can see I just go in and I work that brush until I've made kind of like defined areas of depth and I guess highlight. So mm. yeah. You can spend as long or as little as you want in Photoshop. I don't think it's too important how much you get done or how neat it is in here. This is probably a lot neater than I probably would do it. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely doesn't have to look like this, um, but I like to have a solid kind of foundation before I get into Illustrator. And would you do always do it to scale? Like you don't do it as a thumbnail, you do it basically to scale. Like yeah, so, so even those thumbnails, like I would, this is only a 300 DPI A4 doc, so mm -hmm. I know that that's going to be enough for what I'm doing. Um, if you watched the last episode, we spoke about like being conscious of um, your final result, so having mm -hmm. it set at the right scale is super important. But for this, I know the sketch is going into Illustrator, so I don't have to focus too much on uh, like the clarity of this photo. So yeah. far, it is. The clarity is only important for me to get the job done in the next round. So nice, yeah, that's cool. Hey, we got a question. Um, sure. Jan was asking, "How do you how do you deal with clients <laughs> that want to change something in your work every time they check it?" Oh, how do you deal it's with a it? Rough, it's a rough. It's a rough question. Good question though. Well, hopefully none of my clients are watching. <laughs> but I I think you have to be professional about it. You have to um cop it on the chin a little bit. Yeah. Um, if they're paying you, especially you, kind of you need to do what they say. Um, it's unfortunate, but um, hopefully they're making changes at this point where it's quite easy to change. So you do share this, you would share this sketch kind of with the yeah, client? Yeah, so along the way I'll share them that really rough, ridiculous thumbnails and have mm. a whole bunch of uh, maybe like an A4 sheet full of thumbnails. They can pick kind of direction and layout mm. um, and try to use their imagination to see the rest. Um, then I'll share them this kind of work where it's a bit more refined and you've got a better indication of what it looks like. Mm. Um, and then this is the point where you want to make your changes, I guess. Yeah. Um, if they don't want that flower to look like that, it's going to be a lot easier to make the change now. Um, it's not impossible in Illustrator, obviously. We'll see in the when I jump in there that like it is very, uh, I mean, it's, it's easy in in the sense that like if you build it correctly you can just whip it out and it's yep. fine but um there are times where you're like i wish they made it two weeks ago yeah yeah so um i think yeah be professional about it and just kind of understand that not everyone has a creative eye as well so they might right. see it and go oh that's gonna be awesome and then they see it and they think otherwise mm. what's the saying um no one knows what they want until they see what they don't want right Is that, like so right yeah, so I, I try to go in into all my artworks with an open mind anyway. So, mm. yeah, clients. Nice. It's cool, so, like, sharing it that early on just to try to try to communicate as best you can. Yeah. This is the direction it's going. It's a rough sketch. Yeah. So before you commit to, like, two weeks or however long. Well, I guess it's like anything, right? Like, yeah. uh, if you're an architect, like, their, their job is to share you the house before it. <laughs> yeah. Like, you don't want to make changes after the house is built. That's where the money is kind of, yeah. like it starts hurting your pocket a little bit. <laughs> so True. easier to do it at this point. Nice. All right. So we've got our our, our, our bones um, of the design. Like that, the bones of the, the bones, design. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so now we can kind of like just, we save it out as just a PSD, a TIFF, a JPEG. It's It, it doesn't matter at all. It can go mm. out however you want. And then we're going to jump across to Illustrator. There we are. So yeah, that opened up in kind of like a, a pretty pretty structured form. But as you can see on the side here, there's 
85 different layers. So this is, oh, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a, 85 there's layers. So um, just switch them all off. It's come in as a Photoshop file. I love that they're labeled. They're all labeled. Um, You're such a good design citizen. <laughs> Are they labelled good enough for me to do this <laughs> little run through? Let's find uh, out live. <laughs> Adobe APAC live. Hey, by the way, guys, um, if you're just tuning in here with Dale Bagini, um, illustrator extraordinaire, on for the second time um, on Adobe APAC live. And you can ask your questions in the top right hand corner. So you log in using your Creative Cloud account. Come say hi um, and ask lots of questions. And we're just jumping from Photoshop into Illustrator. Yep. All right. So now we're we're in Illustrator. Um, I get a lot of questions about kind of the the format or or the process of of doing my illustration. There's a mm. lot of people that um they use the 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 pen tool for everything, um, and they'll do the whole artwork just click by click with a mouse. Um, I'm lucky enough to have the tablet, so I use it to my advantage. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't go in with the pen tool at times. So we've got the pen tool over here. This is probably gonna. So you got the pen tool, you got the pencil tool, and you also have the blob tool, the blob brush tool, paint brush tool. So they all are as good as each other. They all have their their pros and cons, I guess. Um, but I'm just gonna walk through how each of them kind of, I guess, responds to how you how you work. So mm -hmm. we'll just open a, a layer. It won't be named. That's okay. You don't have to just this one to, time. Just okay. this one time. You're off the hook. All right. So um, I'm gonna go in. Just open. So this is using the pen tool. All right. So basically, I'm just gonna go in with the pen tool, and I can literally just trace this as good or as bad as I want to. Um. So this pen, the pencil tool, sorry, if you finish a line and you want to keep going, all you do is start that line from the the end point, anchor point. Do you need to hold anything down for that? No, it just kind of grabs it. I think, um, as well, as you get it right on. Well, it doesn't have to be right on. I think it kind of like, what's the word? It's like, it's almost like magnetic to it, but right. um, I'm sure Adobe snap, has, like snap yeah, snap to yeah. point, snap to grid, all that sort of stuff. Mm. So I think it snaps if you're close enough. Um, mm -hmm. So you can just keep going as long as you need to. If you gotta stop and go to the toilet, you can stop and come <laughs> back and get back into it. You can see it's just like joining it back up. So you could go in, do that whole thing with the pencil tool. It's a good time. It feels kind of natural still. You're getting like a few imperfections and stuff. But um, if you want to adjust that sort of stuff, you can just move in on your artwork with the smooth tool, which is located in the the pencil column mm -hmm. and just hit the smooth tool and literally just run that across and you can see it slightly moves the line a little bit and it gets a gets some of the imperfections out so you can see it moves ever yeah. so slightly oh this is crazy So it gets rid of some anchor points, like here's a little bit of a messy point. If I just keep using the smooth tool, I can smooth all that out, which is kind of cool. So the smooth tool helps if, I guess if there's like too many anchor points as well, if you want to just like get rid of some, it'll, it'll eliminate some anchor points, which is kind of right. handy. Um, I've never really been too fussy about how many anchor points, never thought that was a real problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Yeah, so I've got that. I've used the pencil tool, and then I might just bump it up because it's my my major outline of the shape. Right. So then I just. So work. do you always draw it in like a like fairly thin to begin with to try um, to get it precise, and then you thicken it up, or do you draw something in a thicker line? I think I I kind of just use whatever comes out first, like whatever it's set to, and yeah. then I know that each part's going to have a thick outline and thinner detail line. Mm. So yeah, I never really like plan that part mm. per se i just like i go in and and then once i start drawing i go oh it's not thick enough or it's not thin enough and 
yeah, that's pretty off the cuff, that one. Yeah, nice. So I've got another question. Um, what um, AI tool is your favorite? That's what a, AI tool is my favorite? Oh, it's a good question. <laughs> um, I've never really played favorites with them. I I guess I use the the pencil tool and the blob brush the most. Yeah, I'm pretty interested to see your use of the blob. Yeah, so mm. I, I think I, I don't want to play favorites because right now they can't hear you. Yeah, yes. I know, but you know it's it's live, and then <laughs> one will stop working. Yeah, yeah. Then, then we're gonna have to say sorry again. <laughs> oh, it's too much. All right, fair enough. Okay, so I, I've got I've started to build my outlines. Um, the outline will get done in the pencil tool, and it'll end up like this, basically. Cool. So it looks a bit sketchy, but all I've done is built a, a pretty solid structure of the skull. And because I knew there was going to be a flower over this part, I didn't go into as much effort in worrying about how that looks. Just in case yeah. I need to shift the skull or something, I can. Um, but here you can see that I have used... So there's shapes in here. So I've got shapes in there that will probably build with the uh, pencil tool, sorry, and just fill it in. But then you can see here, I've left it ungrouped. So that was a pencil tool drawing, but then I wanted to add an extra little bit of a, a, a tapered line. So that was done with the blob tool there. Um, I'll take it out now. So you can see it's, a, it's separate. Mm. But if you use the blob tool, in actual fact, it should... Uh, and you can change the settings, which uh, or double click on the blob tool and just if you're using a tablet, just set the pressure and then let's do it. All right, so now so now I can just go in and it should in theory. So it should connect to the black. Oops. Okay. So if you click on the same black color, mm. I'm just going to move this out. The blob tool should automatically grab it if it's on the same layer and it's not doing it. So see what happens when you play favorites. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you, have cool. to say, you have to say not Bob cool. Tool straight up. Actually, it's not my favorite anymore. I've changed <laughs> my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Always happens when, you, when you're doing it like All right, that. so it's supposed to, basically it will grab to the same color and right. it will convert it into one solid shape, basically. Right. But um, believe me, it works. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work at home. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah, so you go in, I use the blob tool for that sort of thing to give it these these extra detailed lines and things like that. Mm. Um, I do usually use it a lot more on um, on the the shading part of it. Um, I just like that the, the blob tool is a little bit more, it, it gives like a natural, like a, a messier look. Like it, yeah. as you draw with it, it's obviously pressure sensitive as well. So I can get some good lines and you can see that it's like it gives like all these little weird. Yeah, it's like nice little imperfections in there. Yeah, and then again, you can go in because it's a shape and you can see all the, the anchor points are here. So I can go in and fix, wow. fix that. <laughs> yeah, it's going crazy. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. So yeah, that's the blob tool in a, in a nutshell for where it would be used and where I find it handy. Mm. Um, and then, so basically, I draw all my outlines in, and I'll just show you that it's all been built in layers. So as you do, um, Nazira was asking, do you have any special brushes or just the default brushes in um, AI? All right, so the, the brush question gets asked a lot, and um, so basically I've only got one brush that I would use. And I know that you don't need to, to create this brush. Um, mm. It's, you can set it as a stroke if you use the uh, the paintbrush tool or the pe the pencil tool, whatever. Let's use pencil. So if you use the pencil tool and create a stroke, 
um, you can go into stroke and you can apply a tapered like start right. to finish right which is that's great like I can do all my tapered lines like that so I just I could do that draw all these lines go in select it and change it to this and I've got that yep it's fine it's great um, but I this one here so this one here which is oh sorry my layers are all might locked. be locked they're all locked so yeah that brush there I've created and it's basically just I guess I I never really use this probably because I never even knew it existed mm. so for for the longest time I used to create this brush by just drawing that shape and then all you have to do is you can draw any shape to make a brush um but if I do this and pull that into brushes so if you just drag it into brushes a little pop-up comes up mm. just call it art brush okay um give it the direction you can rename it you won't for this but um yeah you just give it the direction set it it goes into your little your little menu there and if now i was to use the let's say the paintbrush tool grab that i now can i've got the tapered lines just and automatically I, yeah and i guess the the good thing about that is i don't have to go in select the stroke mm. convert it to the the profile or anything i can just use that and then you can make i guess alternate brushes out of that brush so mm. You can see this is all just a bunch of strokes, but I've dragged it in using that same method and it's created this brush now. So if I was to select that brush. Like a brush, in, brush inception yeah. situation happening. Yeah, it's cool here. though, cause like it's, you can do whatever you want. It's, mm. it's so easy to make the brush. I guess people forget that like you can just make, you don't have to go download yeah. brushes for everything you need. Um, yeah. I mean, I've bought and downloaded stuff before, but these are like the only brushes I use and so it's pretty cool yeah so I can minimize time again by having multiple lines drawn in opposed to going in and doing each line for line in here so so do you do that for shading like that kind of thing or like um, kind of cross hatch kind of thing you could yeah. yeah um for me I used to just use it for basically doing all my detail lines um I just run it over why is it doing that so I could do that and it would just mm. save time on doing all the multiple lines that you may have seen in that sketch. So I've got all those little lines in there. You can see that I plan on yep. doing, but with this, I could just go like that. And then obviously the brush would be refined. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's super handy and super easy to do. Just, I guess the, the programs are uh, very intuitive. They, they're not hard to use at all. So. Yeah, build your own brush, download your brush, whatever gets the job done, I guess. Mm. Um, but yeah, now I've got all my my layers open. It's getting a bit crazy. Mm. But so yeah, talk about the layers. So I've got everything on layers, and this probably goes back to that conversation about changes and you know being conscious of client requests and stuff like that. Um, so I've got everything basically good to go if something had to move i could just lock whatever layers i'm i'm not using and then just say i want to change the hand i've got i can move the hand oh, I can grab everything oh sorry so the hand so the hands all in one piece it's right. basically oh, sorry something else is unlocked but i can move that continue lines move where i have to it's it's just an easier process to do it like that um like i said and coloring and stuff like that you've got everything segmented into separate pieces mm. um but yeah so i've got all my layers you can see them all over here all being built with outline white bases there's um so it's all got like yeah so the outline of the skull the skull white as a base just so i can work a bit cleaner and see what i'm doing 
Um, and then if I put colours, I put them between the outline and the the white base. Just right. No real reason, just out of habit. Just I could how you just, do it. I could just use the white base as my colour layer, but I just like to have it in there as a as a divider. So yeah, and then so once I've got to this point where I am ready to start detailing, I basically just use. This um, machine's being a bit funny. So I'll just find, so I want to do some details on the skull. So I'll go um, to the outline layer. I'll make a new one and I'll put it just between the two layers and I'll call it skull details. I wonder if this is an inside question, but Scott's asking, Dale, have you ever had any requests from bikey gangs to create their <laughs> jacket design? Um, no. No, I, I'm... That might be I, an offer. Yeah, um, yes, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't... I don't think... Where do bikies get their designs done? It's an interesting it's question. It's got to come from somewhere, right? I might just... How do you reach out to them? Is there, like, a website? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it works that easy. Um, I think you could put most of my designs on a on a bikey jacket, but... Um, Have you had any, like, strange requests or, like... Um, no, because you get oh. tattoos a lot, right? Or tattoo artists yeah, asking yeah. to collaborate and stuff. Yeah, most of the time it's kind of tattooists wanting to take their work to the digital level. Well, not so much anymore because of, um, I guess, iPad Pro coming out and and being so easy to use. They're all like on the digital. They're getting in, into it now. Yeah, they're on the digital bandwagon. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but interesting, I guess. Hmm. I. I I think at the moment I'm working with um, a company and they do like um, the the vapes the those I like vaping the, yeah and they're yeah. getting my artworks engraved on their devices oh, right. which is kind of interesting to me because like I do such high level like line work like detail work I'm always interested to see and results but um yeah no strange requests um I wouldn't say no to a, a bikey gang wanting it. But there you go. If uh, if you're working for a biking gang, um, yeah. shout out to Dale. I'm sure. Someone was actually asking um, if you haven't. Um, where can they find your work as well? Oh, uh, my work. Instagram. Ah, uh, you can check awesome. Instagram. You can check um, my my Behance portfolio in there. But if you just type in dalebagini dot com, it links you to my Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. It's pretty yeah, pretty easy to find it. Yeah, your Instagram's awesome as well. It's a lot of like behind the scenes stuff and yeah, like I think there's um, halfway through like process stuff, which I love. I definitely think there's power in the process. It's it's cool to see the finished result and um and share that and where it, where it goes. I think, but to watch, I I know I really admire artists that are comfortable to share yeah a process. Um, yep. a, some artists are very precious, but um, mm. yeah, there's a lot of power in the process. So power in the process, enjoy, yeah, I like that. Enjoy it. Um. Want to do it? Let's do another couple of questions if we can. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, Zero Universe, real name for sure. Uh, any comments on the puppet wrap tool? Mm. Do you use it sparingly, avoid, or is it the best tool ever? Oh, um, I know what's in there and I know what it does, but I don't think it like plays too much. You don't use the, it that much. Yeah, I don't think mm. it. I I have much use for it. Um, yeah. I I think like the guys that are into animation and stuff like to tweak their mm. their I guess the models poses and stuff but um it's all of my stuff is kind of static and i know the puppet warp's pretty interesting to watch mm. but um yeah it's it's this one here for anyone uh we're not on that screen but it's this that tool there yeah <laughs> the little pin it's pretty fun to play around with yeah i've we had a um adobe come out to where i used to work and they showed us and i was like oh that's cool what, what can i do with it yeah yeah <laughs> i I don't have a use for it, so sorry. Happens a lot, yeah. Yeah, not sure. Not yet. Don't use it all that much. Um, and um, Nazira was asking, what's your favourite client work so far and why is it your favourite? Because um, I noticed that you've been working with the Western Sydney Wanderers. Yeah. so pretty sweet. That's, that is kind of close to, close to home kind of thing, like for many reasons. So obviously they're from Western suburbs and they're very proud of being Western suburbs established. Um so I do a lot of work with them, which is cool because I live out west, and it's kind of like a really, I don't know, it's got it's got a good vibe, and they're a real good crew to work with. Um, I, I think they they know how to put together a brief pretty well as well. So oh, yeah. and they know who I Always am and, and what I can do. So they're not like, oh, but can we have this? 
So um, yeah, Isn't there that's like a dolphin in there somewhere. Yeah, can we just <laughs> throw crazy. in an eagle or? <laughs> but I, I just think they're a good brand in themselves as well. Like they, mm. they, they represent the West pretty good, and yeah, I'm pretty proud to be from the West. So nice one. that's yeah, it's probably a very notable one. Yeah, that's cool. Nice recent one as well. Yeah. Good questions, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Andrea, for mm. checking out my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very good. It's good, right? It's so good. All right. So. We're here. We're um, we're at a stage where we can start adding some some life into this guy who's currently dead and burning. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I usually go in. I've got my now I've got a details layer. I do apologize if this is flickering. I think it's just flickering on here on this side. All right. So yeah, for the for the home crew, we're just getting a couple of flickers on um, right on the yes. right on your screen. But I don't think you guys are getting that at home, are you? No one's mentioned it. So good. Usually, we, usually we find out pretty quick if um, the home experience this, isn't isn't the, optimal. This is testing my skills and because it's really annoying. <laughs> All right, so I'll just go in and I'll start adding this stuff where I want it to. So much skill involved. <laughs> It's like next level. It's crazy. I just all right. So I'll go in. I know my my sketch is coming into play. I know where all my my really solid dark bits are going. And again, I'm just using the blob tool. It's not my favorite tool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have words to it later. Poor blob tool. I'm gonna have to have words later. You're gonna go home and just hide it immediately. Yeah, delete. Put it in the put it in the sin bin. (laughs) So yeah, I just go in. Like I said, doing the leg work in Photoshop is great because, um, it's also about like being conscious of my time. Um, if I can nut out all that detail in Photoshop and know exactly where I'm going. I'm not there scratching my head at 2 a.m. wondering how it's going to look good or how it's going to look bad. Yeah. Um, I can just literally go in and start working into this and, and making it a beautiful piece rather than off the cuff and it coming out a bit half cooked. Yeah. So, yeah, I just keep it's going in. Like I said, it's, it's all on another layer. So this is... It, it's all under the outline. I can afford to be a bit messy. This the um, blob tool is a little bit. You can see it sometimes it just does its own thing. It's got this little like yeah, like shortcut through just there. Yeah, for a second. It, it's it's funny because it's it's good on certain curves, but if you hit the wrong angle, it does what it wants. But mm. like I said, you can go in and edit this as much as as you want. So I'm just gonna go in. You can use it like a paintbrush and fill that whole gap, or you can. Um, oh, look, it's doing what it's supposed to. <laughs> you can see that that's all one shape as you paint with it. What it's, was that shortcut then? Um, that's the wireframe shortcut. So nice. that's command on a Mac, control on a PC, Y. Nice. And it just lets you see how messy your work really is, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> this is where the thick lines save yeah. lives. So I, I flick between it to make sure it's going okay. Right. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going through quite roughly, doing all this stuff. So yeah, you can paint that whole that whole thing in, or you can just do that and delete that insert, and it fills hmm. it. So yeah, that's the blob tool doing all the the groundwork, um, and then. We'll move up here. So as you're doing that, we've got a question. Yeah, um, sure. which is Which is the best tool for drawing? Which is pretty interesting because last time we were in Photoshop and this time we were in Illustrator. Um, for drawing, like I said, I think it's um, kind of depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, the pen tool, the... Um, the pencil tool and the the brush tool will give you quite defined, refined lines like this one up mm. here. Um, but the blob tool, to me, I don't think I'd 
sketch with it or anything, but um, I, I guess you could. But I think the blob tool is going to give you the most like natural looking line. Mm. So I can, I, I'd say <laughs> for me, I'd I'd say the paintbrush or the pencil tool is probably the best tool for drawing. Mm. Um, but it's it's up to the user, I guess. Like, um. If you're trying to get that really like worn out, like natural look, probably go blob tool because you get a lot of that pressure sensitivity and stuff like yeah. that. The other ones are quite refined lines. So yeah, I I don't prefer one over the other. I just choose to use those. The, um, the kind one, of the right tool for the job. Yeah, I guess. the anchor points yeah. help as well. Um, it being a line versus it being a shape. So you can see, um, this is a line over here and the blob tool. So you look at the wireframe, so that's a shape. Right. And yep. that's a um that's a stroke. So I can still adjust this to my liking quite nat uh quite easily. Where this one's got a whole bunch of anchor points that are gonna like you've got to mm. to try to refine it, you gotta go play with everything and just makes it a bit hard for yeah, you. Yeah, it's a really good point. And actually in the wireframe in the the Yeah what you did here, that's all turned it into one shape. Yeah, so as you were saying the, before. Yeah. So it's actually behaving how it was meant to before here. It's climbing up the favorite <laughs> ladder again. <laughs> it's getting back on top. Awesome. Yeah. So no favorite or preference. Um, so I just, I think this is all over time. You end up just using the same tools and the same process so often that mm. you forget that there's anything else. Yeah. Like I refuse to learn anything else. Like <laughs> these ones work and the work's coming out good. Yeah. Don't change it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so now, like, so that's the basic gist of getting all your block detail in, like all your shadows and stuff like that. Um, so we've got this kind of thing happening, and you can already see just that little bit of darkness that we added mm. straight away adds the, you know, the depth I was looking for when I was sketching in Photoshop. Um, but the color... From here, I don't know what that is. So I'll just add another layer under those details. So I'll keep the black on top. Label that one. And then again, I can go in. So that's white is there. So I know there's a white base. I don't know what this layer is. So let's just get rid of it. Um, and then I can go in and I can go fill it like with the blob tool again you just can pick a color if he's on this is just for this is not working let's just use that color so if you wanted to you could go into this now increase that blob tool by I don't know to 10 point if you want and then you can see that's enlarged so I can go in now and I can just color like that if you want. Let your inner child out. Coloring in. So that, and that'll go to the back because it's, I'm using my layers correctly and nice. it's, it's using, it's underneath everything that I've been doing under the flower, under the hand, if I've set it up correctly and it should be able to just keep doing that. So nice. that's one way to fill it and feel like you're still working traditionally. <laughs> um, I know obviously there's tons of ways you can do this. These are ways that I would recommend to get the job done quickly, not not necessarily the, the cleanest way to do this because the blob tool does pick up all these little imperfections. So it, you may think you were just coloring like a champion, <laughs> but now you've got a white hole in your right. design and you might not notice until it's gone to print so it's a bit you know it's a bit risky mm. but if you're a really good coloring in person like my daughter you know you'll nail it you gotta get your daughter on the live <laughs> yeah stream, look she'd do a better job than that i reckon <laughs> <laughs> so that's one way you can use the blob tool or you can use so i created a white base for this but maybe i want to just use that base now I know that I can use that as my color, but I really want to keep that white. So I'll just paste that in place. And that's just going on the same, um, the color layer you can go in and now you can change that color to whatever you want. 
You nice. can have a red skull, you can have a blue skull, whatever you want. Um, and then you just do that for all your elements. Make sure that they're all being on the right layer so that they're going to fall behind the blacks and not over accidentally go over your rows or anything like that. Right. And then, again, make another layer. And I'll have skull colors shading. I can go in and I'll use my blob tool. Yeah, just go a bit darker. Oh, it's a bit big. And I can add my... So again, it's going to fall behind all that black. Now I can just like start giving it more, more tone and depth in it. Nice. And then I could do all those little lines in there. I can use the blob tool and do that, and it can be really like sporadic, I guess. Like it's, it's never going to be exactly the same every time. Or I can mm. go back, and I can use my pencil tool, and do the same thing that I showed you. Grab those. Or you can do select all, same stroke weight. Just grab those and then just go into your stroke and hit the old. There we go. And that wouldn't work on the blob, obviously, because the blob's a shape. The blob's a shape, yeah. So right. that's the blob's great, like I said, for that really natural look. And, you know, you get a very natural feel, but the. The stroke, having the stroke available to like then go in and, you know, customize it or not customize, but just go mm. bigger if you think it's not enough. Like it's so much easier. And then, yeah, just keep going mm. until it's all done. Um, got a couple of questions. I, I know this one's been up for a while um, from Nazira, but how, how would your work process be if you didn't have a Wacom? So I guess there's probably people out there that like only have yeah. a mouse or yeah. touchpad. Um, I guess without the the Wacom, I guess the the main thing that it does for me is eliminates um, the need to have to sketch, mm. um, take a photo, or scan in your artwork than digital uh, digital ink. Um, I, I would still do it the same way. I guess without the tablet, I would still like I could still do the sketch on paper, rough, all that. So that process mm. won't change. It just won't have a screen. So it'll basically be on paper. Right. Um, and then I'll scan it in. Well, not even scan. Who has a scanner anymore? I use my phone. phone. <laughs> yeah, I use my phone, yeah. take a photo of it, upload it. Um, and then I, c I would just use the click uh, pen tool and I would, um, instead of using my tablet to draw freely, I just pen tool into to go over the lines basically mm. um i haven't had to do it for so long so there's probably a ton of ways that you can do it's it it's been a while yeah it's <laughs> been a while um but yeah pen tool i guess yeah yeah cool very good um andrea was asking for speed coloring would you um would you favored approach to keep the elements separate rather than use a pen tool to select areas for color mm. Mm. not really sure um, i guess is that like a versus like I guess um, so, yeah. I I know I say it a lot, but I think it's if you find that you can you can click those shapes in and create those shapes so like you can draw in that skull quicker and change the colour with the picker faster than you can with the blob tool, then I'd say avoid the blob tool. Right. You know, um I don't I'm not here to, to tell people how to do their job or how to make it um easier because I don't know everyone's circumstances but yeah. um I, I do know that if if you think one thing is better than the other just scrap trying to figure it something out uh, something else out right like I said I don't try to learn um about the perspective tool because I don't need it for what I do so mm. I just leave it like it looks great and I'm sure it's got its purpose but for me I've I've done this for so long 
uh, I guess, like a traditional artist, just like drawing, mm. sketching real rough. But um, yeah, whatever works. I think if if the the speed painting with the blob tool works, go for it. Yeah, but cool. Hope that answers it. Yeah, was, cool. Kind yeah. of. She did clarify it was versus. So yeah. I think okay. So. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. We've only got ten minutes as well, guys. So um, if you do have any more questions as we go, um, shoot them through. So I'm just gonna continue working through as as I would at home. So I've got. I want to add more dark, so now I'm not going to use the blob tool and I can grab the pencil tool. Thanks, JB, sharing uh, your Behance link profile. So, That's yeah, sweet. so Dale's on Behance as well, so check that out. It's a little bit quiet on there, but. like really fine yeah it's a little bit um this is i'm i'm being a little bit messy but this is to give you the idea so yeah i've got some new the, the black in here so that was using the pen tool versus mm. uh sorry the pencil tool um and again i can go in and fix up that little so, so you can grab the pencil tool and you can actually if you draw from here to here it'll kind of catch it and fix it just fix it out yeah so mm. i can do that and i can just round out these points if i don't want them pointy like i said i, I feel like the program does a lot of the thinking for me which is lovely mm. um nice as an artist i think most artists are quite time poor, so it's nice to have tools that can quickly do a job where it used to take you, a, you know. A lot of like manual hours. Yeah, like I mean, yeah. it would have only taken, what, two minutes to fix that, but yeah, that's two minutes I could have been doing something else. Yeah. All the time, multiply that over your day and your week exactly. and then the, your year. Imagine. It's a lot of time. Imagine all the Netflix I'd be missing. While you're going, we've got another question. In in what format do you ship your final artwork to clients after approval? So I guess an absolute final artwork. What's that typically? Uh, like? um, again, it depends. Um, we covered a lot of this in the last video, but mm. um, I, I like to be quite upfront with the client and ask them the question, is it going to print large yeah. format? Is it going to T-shirts, black, white backgrounds? Like I try to be very um, clear up front. Um, lately, I feel like the technology has changed within the print industry and more people can accept JPEGs as artworks now, yeah, which is crazy. Well, we had Jeremy on um, two weeks ago. So Jeremy Jeremy Lord, yeah. who, who you know as yeah. well, knows you. You guys know each other quite well. Um, and he was talking about his, his, his sent work off as RGB yeah. to digital printers these days. It's crazy. And they can match it up. And I think it's crazy for me because I, I started in a print house while working and and watching files have to be like pre-pressed and you yeah. know approved and everything came through cmyk high res yeah now it's like oh can you just send this a png and it can yeah. go on like a mug a pillow a, yeah. like, it's crazy so I, I tend to ask where it's going and it doesn't always go out as vector format sometimes it can mm. go out as like a a large format psd or something like yeah. that but yeah for the most part i try to do vector only because Clients are crazy. They'll just scale stuff and you're like, you see it printed, you're like, what happened? Like, yeah. I, I sent you that file black, it's now pink. Like, it's crazy. So I try mm. to, at least with the vector f um, format, it's super clear if they scale it or they want to muck around with the colors. Like, I trust yeah. that they can gauge it with some creative wire. But, um, yeah, don't put too much trust in it. <laughs> and I guess if a client comes back to you six months, a year, two years later, and they <laughs> say, hey, can we use this artwork? Yeah. We want to make... Like, let's say the Western Sydney Wanderers or something, yep. and they're like, hey, we want to make a giant flag or something. Yeah. If you've done something in Photoshop, you'd have it, to well, yeah, probably rescale and exactly. redo it and, and it's like a full redo where if it's an Illustrator file, I know for a fact that I can just bump that up to as big as it needs to outline all the strokes. Yeah. And just, yeah, I can go as big as I want to. Yeah. But just yeah. don't tell the client that. Yeah. Oh, I've got to start from scratch. It's yeah, a huge sorry. job. Um, that's a whole nother Might thing. take a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're going. Oops. 
Yeah, I'm just continuing with this shading. So you can see that like, and this is not, this is me how I generally work. Like if I don't feel like using one tool, I'm, I'll, I'll use switch. the other one. Yeah, it's, I think as long as the job gets done, I feel like there's, you don't have to be too precious about it. So with the blob tool, I can grab my eraser as well. And you can change the settings on the eraser on the tablet. Sorry if you don't all have tablets, but I just, I can change this to three. And then I can kind of like, I can cut back into that blob mm. tool and reshape that however I want. So there's a lot of ways to, what did I say? There's a lot of ways to skin a fish or whatever it a is. Way to, a lot of ways to carve a skull. Yeah, that's exactly right. There's there's no right or wrong. Um, <laughs> you can see the results down here aren't far from what just happened up there and it mm. was using two different combinations, but it just shows how versatile, I guess, the program is as well. Yeah. So now I've got the ability to, I can change that skull to, I don't know. What's a good color for a skull these days? Blue, of course. Blue. And then I can just go select all, once you've got all your colors laid down, you can go select same fill color. And so now I know they're all selected, all those dark reds. And, and that's can, the whole document? Yeah. So it'll select all from all your active layers. And then I can go dark blue. So then you just go in and do the same thing, select strokes. I think there's a mixture in here, but if you just do select same stroke color, you'll grab all those and I can change it to my color picker. Nice. That's a pretty good little tip. Yeah. There you go. Because how many colors would you typically work in? Um, typically it's like three and it mm. generally is black, white and gray. Yeah. Um, but even that, I've tried to reduce it to two and just use half tones as my grays. Right. So um, to quickly show you, so you can go in and make half tones. I'm sure, like, um, there's there's easy ways to create these things. There is also a ton of websites that can offer, yeah, half tone brushes, um, texture packs, stuff like that. So here's some that I've just downloaded, um, the half tones, and. The half tones are great because they've been created as swatches. So, um, if you have seen some of my work as of late, there's been a lot of half tone action, um, which is great because it looks good and it it's super easy to use. So I can go in, pick whichever one I want. Let's just pick this one. And then I can go in and basically just brush that in using the blob to oh sorry, it's on the wrong layer rookie error <laughs> <laughs> so i can go in it's definitely not a mustard color so it goes in as a half tone looks awesome yeah it's great it's, i love the half tone effect yeah i think it's a and to reduce the color count as well, like, so I don't have to use a gray to give this um, mm. shadow under here and it kind of, the ink weight on, I'm just talking in clothing especially, like, it's less ink going down, so it's a better thing to, a uh, better outfit to wear. Right. Um, and yeah, the half tones, I think they're just really effective. You can still get a sense of, like, depth to it, but um, without being a solid chunk of color, like up in here. Yeah. So yeah, but you can just run that even over all that color. Oops, so let's put it on the right layer. And it is a shape, so I don't even have to color it. I just have to do that. Yeah, I like that, like sitting behind the, yeah. the line shading. It's so, cool. And then, and the beauty is that with the blob brush you can still get tapered lines if you really want to mm. go into that sort of detail which is great and you can um, use 
different weights and stuff like that to help mm. you like well, it's all change um to get some some more depth in there you can up the weight of the the half tone so mm. you can go in and transform it you can go into here and transform scale oh, I would have downloaded a different different pack I didn't realize you could change the uniform well like that I didn't know until just recently that you can just go in and force it to scale yeah. it and then that way like say it doesn't matter oh, so this this one some of them if you scale that circle down, it'll just scale the circle. It won't scale the half tone. Right. Because I've just forced it, it's now going to scale with it. But mm. yeah, so I'd scale it and multiply it over that. Oh, sorry, just draw over that. Mm. So just say we've got a smaller one. And then you can go over it again. Just layers. to give it more layers and more. Mm. yeah more more tone but yeah so half tones are great um depends on the work depends on what i'm trying to achieve from the piece but um yeah and it's and it's just go for broke from there basically nice just everything's on layers good to go to start coloring chuck some let's just color it all real quick we're technically at time but we can we can go a little bit a little bit over so just you can just see how nice. easy it is to finish the piece like if you've mapped it out correctly then you shouldn't have a drama this is where you get your daughter to come in and yeah can you finish help, that off help you coloring in <laughs> that's so, taking a break oh uh, i wish hurry up grow <laughs> grow <laughs> grow my pretty. you need an assistant uh, are they drawing your daughters um let's say yes they're on the ipad a lot right so i'm just assuming they're on their drawing not watching youtube oh, okay or netflix yeah we've got a question about netflix in a bit yeah oh no <laughs> i i'm not very um netflix savvy no no <laughs> so, trying to just bang these colors in so basically i just pick a base color and you could just sketch all your mids highs lows or whatever you needed to well that's been that has a clipping mask on it it's really challenging me today yeah this is like it's good the most intense so intense like <laughs> quest so, so intense <laughs> So we'll get to, we'll get to some of those questions in a minute. So if you have asked a question, stick around. I'll make sure we we do our best. All right, this design's now for sale too. All right, <laughs> <laughs> but you can't change the colors. It's horrendous. <laughs> it's tragic. Save so in the background. I can go in there and change that. So yeah, you can see how easy it is to go in and change the colors. I'm pretty, um, it's, it looks like a mess over here, but I guess your end result is so much easier to work with if you've mm. got everything in layers. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the gist of, um, creating an illustrator piece from Photoshop using those few tools. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I love make, I love creating your own line. I think that's really, really cool. Like I know you can download them and everything, yeah. but I think it's quite cool. I think it's like, fun to it, understand what you're creating. Yeah. Um, I, I, it makes you appreciate like your work as well. Um, yeah. I think when I look at it, like if you make a, a, a crazy stroke and it's a little bit in, like it's got some imperfections, mm. it's yours. You can own the piece yep. right from rough to finish. Yeah. You haven't, I mean, I've downloaded some half tones and stuff, but um, it's it's nice to do it on your own and yeah, give it give it a like a proper go before you mm -hmm. do the you know download and buy. But that's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Well, well, let's get to some of these questions if you've got a couple of minutes. Yeah, stick sure. around. Um, 
so we uh, Scott was asking, well, you know, what Netflix Netflix shows you watching? But I guess if you're not watching Netflix, do you, do you watch uh, like stuff while you're while you're um, creating at home or I listen to music? I listen, I listen to kids. To, I listen to music a lot. Yeah. I listen to uh, if I am watching TV or something in the background, it's usually like Red Bull TV and it's like skateboarding, right? Motorbikes, anything that's like you don't really need to focus too much yeah, on. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you miss like, yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I tried watching Frontier. Frontier? I the that. Uh, It's that guy, what's his name? Aquaman, whatever his name is. Anyway, I oh, tried yeah. watching that. Jason uh, Mona. Yeah, Mona, I, yeah, I think I got tired. I slept and oh, I'm yeah. not going to watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it's just <laughs> too much effort. I just, by the time I get to watch anything on Netflix, I'm too tired. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um... Yeah, uh, Nazira. Yeah, if you watch the Jeremy Lord one, we actually talk about it. I think about forty-five minutes in, or, or or towards the end, we actually talk about that. That was completely new to me. Um, so when I was in design school, everyone said CMYK um, is the only way for printing. Um, so not. yeah, apparently um, digital printers are just totally fine with RGB. And if you've seen Jeremy Lord's work, it's very very colourful. Vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so yeah, he was he was just saying yeah, get a good printer and it's possible. So it might. My design teachers, <laughs> wrong again. Um, Failed. <laughs> Failed. <laughs> um, Christy S is asking, what's the best way to select specific areas of your artwork via the layers? Is it to group them together? Um, I don't know if you were here for before, but you were to kind of you kind of hamburger your things, don't you? you yeah. Have, have like a couple of things grouped, then you have like a middle separating yeah, I guess and then the bottom. To to I guess to select the so my skull is in separate parts, which is I think what you're trying to say. So. I would group all the colors. So if they're all blue, I would group those. I would just use them as a group and select all of those at once. Um, but yeah, my layer list is, it's intense. There's like outline, color, darker tones. Like it's, yeah, it's really, uh, I'm giving, I'm getting anxiety looking at it actually. <laughs> you never like, is this like you're looking in the mirror moment? Yeah, it's, yeah, at the end of the job, I'm like, oh. Uh, we'll just group it all and send just, it over. Just group all. <laughs> just group all. <laughs> nice one. Um, so best advice for transitioning to digital art from traditional art mm. from zero? From digital, to, sorry, to digital from traditional. Yeah, um, yeah, from zero universe. Sorry, that's the name um, of the thing. I think lower all your expectations. Um, try not to think your digital art is going to be as incredible as your traditional art because right. chances are it won't be for that first Take a while. Yeah, you're gonna have some like, like teething years, I guess. Um, mm. And I think I spoke to someone just recently, and they're like, "Oh, I really want to move to digital. What's the best tablet?" And it's like, I don't think the tablet has anything to do with it. I think if you're an artist, you, sh- you should be able to make it work on whatever you use. Right. Um, I and again, a lot of the um, comments I get are that, "Oh, this is, you know, this one's the best," and it's like it's, it, but I could do the same job on a um intro the the standalone uh sorry the one what what do you call it how do you define it just the normal peripheral yeah device one yeah right? yeah that's what i've got at home yeah. so it's like a mouse but yeah so it. if you can move from traditional to digital and go pencil to mouse to intro or yeah. graphite bamboo whatever they're called now um and work your way up i think your art will evolve with you so right. the best tips are just to like keep at it like mm. don't be disheartened because i was there once and it sucks like <laughs> but you'll get there you'll get there but yeah so best advice is patience i guess yeah. um wacom <laughs> or ipad i think you kind of answered that <coughs> as kind of the, the, the different tools and an artist can yep. get comfortable and, and use them all yeah um and then hannah yeah separate so yeah layers <laughs> yeah oh my god you're working in animation yeah exactly um so yeah, we're gonna have some um, After Effects stuff coming in the next couple of weeks as well. So Hannah, you might be interested in that. Um, Andrea, do you ever still play use an old school pencil and paper in, or is it digital all the way? Um, to be honest, I don't use a lot of it anymore, um, simply because I I don't need to. Um, but like I said, it's, it's like off the back of that other question. I think as an artist, you should just be able to pick up anything and and create yeah. um results will vary obviously because this can refine it a lot but um mm. the pencil stuff's great because if you're on a train or you're at dinner or something you can just quickly rough it out like i'm not going to whip out my big 
tablet and put it on the table. At dinner. Just, hang on, guys. I'm just going <laughs> to... Just, just with the in-laws. Just. Yeah, just... Uh, I think there's a, a need for traditional pencils, all that sort of stuff mm. forever. But um, if I don't need to, I, I won't address it. Like, I, I don't have to. Mm. Um, but yes, the pencil... I still have a pretty good um, pencil collection and mm. I've got a drawing desk. It's just... There. got boxes on it at the <laughs> yeah. moment but i've got a drawing desk. storage yeah <laughs> totally well that's awesome um well wow thank you guys thank you for all the questions um and where can people find out more about you we mentioned um mentioned before but so it's instagram it's art by dale correct art by dale for yeah. instagram and then dale bagini um on everything else just type it in dalebagini.com and it will send you where you need to go exactly where you need to go mm-hmm. um thank you all so much Uh, for joining us at Adobe APAC Live. We'll be back at the same time, same channel, uh, here next week from 2 p.m. with another artist um, for another Adobe APAC Live. Thanks, everybody, and thank you, Dale. No worries. Thank you. Cheers. Awesome.